Okay. Welcome to Selectman's meeting for the Town of Acton, Maine for May 14th, 2019. First item is salute the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. The person that I was going to embarrass tonight is not here, but we do want to mention that last Wednesday night at the York County Firefighters Meeting, uh, their regular their yearly awards ceremony, the Firefighter of the Year Award for dedicated service went to Acton Fire's Robin Ham. So I wanted to thank him tonight, but he is not here, um, which I told him I was going to mention him and. I get tonight, and I guess that's why you didn't show up, but <laughs> that's okay. We'll get him again. So anyway, um, but anyway, yeah, he did get that award, and uh, he's made, I don't know, well over 60, 70 percent of the calls that Acton has. So anyway, so I just wanted to, to acknowledge that Robin Ham received that award. So okay, on we go. Approval of the agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? For vote. All in favor? All opposed. Minutes of the last meeting. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Okay. I'll second that. Moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Any discussion? No. Call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed. Department Heads Committee Chair updates. Let's go with the Forest Conservation Committee. How are you guys? Steve. Good. Just wanted to get a little bit of a forum today um, for the uh, Forestry and Conservation Committee. Um, a couple of months back, I had submitted to the committee the forestry plan that I wrote over the course of the last winter. Uh, it was accepted by the committee, brought forth to the town, and I guess the questions that I was having now was to say that as we're looking at this management plan that has, uh, you know, different assets for the property, recommendations to do. What do we do as a committee and as a town if we're going to try to enact this plan and, and do something out there in the woods? Um, you know, I've got all the information for the lot, and we can go through, you know, obviously not here, but stand by stand, recommendation by recommendation. But the real question is, I guess, is what is the procedure now for this, this, uh, this plan? Um, if we're going to enact it, how do we go about doing such a thing? In the past, when we had done work on the Hebo Hybo Road lot, it had been... Um, Brought to the selectmen, Sele selectmen recommended and approved the procedure for me to move forward and do some of the work. But obviously, you know, we can change our procedure, I guess. Uh, you know, the idea behind having, you know, multiples of hundreds of acres with different recommendations on different acres can be pretty cumbersome if we have everything lined up for everyone in town to give, you know, their advice on what to do and, and that. But certainly anything like, uh, you know, inviting public opinion at these meetings, whether it be a conservation committee meeting or a selectman's meeting or just with in the town forester as an educator at the same time along the way is certainly welcome. But we do need to have a bit of a, I guess, a truncated way through this in order to have some enacting of this if we choose to do so. So I guess I just wanted to give a heads up that the plan is in. Recommendations have been made. What do we do next? Okay. Who, who's the liaison? I am. You are. Yeah. Uh, we have a meeting tonight, right? I'm sorry? You have a meeting tonight, right? Uh, it's actually next week, next Wednesday. I mean, excuse right. me, next Tuesday. Third right. Tuesday. Third Tuesday. All right. So, yeah, that's I a guess, good question. I don't know what's next. I've never... Yeah, I guess we'll talk about it when uh, we yeah. have the meeting. Sure. And I guess uh, see which well, like way I we said, go. Like I said, it's really the, the uh, conservation committee has certainly said, okay, well, here's the plan. You know, yep. now the town has it. So, yep. again... Um, you guys will talk about it, you mean, or, or, or the committee will talk I'll, about I'll it? I'll come to your meeting yep. um, and kind of go through everything. And yep. then I don't, I mean, I've never had to do this before. On behalf of the selectmen. Yeah. Right, I yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'll be at your meeting and then um, kind of listen to what you, you know, what you have to say and what you've done and stuff and bring it back to them. And then I guess we go from there, we make a decision. Yep, that sounds so fine. That sound Again, good? just don't know how to, how to move forward. So right. there's a lot to talk about on that. Other okay. than that, um, the committee has uh, lost its 
secretary, we're going to have to replace that person. I guess I'll be in touch with uh, Janice to figure out how to go about having that happen on the floor, I guess, at the June meeting to elect someone new. So we're still looking for a resignation from her. So until we have a, res a written resignation um, okay. in place, which I've told you and I've told her, right. um, okay. she has to resign before the position can be filled. Um, and depending on when her term expires, as deal, depends on how we deal with it. Okay. Um, I mean, that's more of a procedural question, obviously. Yeah, yeah but we haven't, I mean, we haven't gotten anything. So as far okay. as the town is concerned, she's still a sitting member. <laughs> okay. okay. Anything else for me, I guess? That's just where we are yeah. at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Next Tuesday. Any other department heads, committee chairs? Nope. Okay, we're going to move on. Old business. We have 911. Addressing uh, uh, operator. Uh, we're going to deal with through an executive session okay. next week. Okay. Road commissioner, road committee ordinance. Sorry, I'm canceling the uh, forest conservation meeting that my okay. office has down for tonight. So I'm trying okay. to get that scheduled. I figured it was just me because you know. No, that's oh, okay. Have. All right, um, so it's next. All right. What's the okay. All right, so these are the notes that I got from Elise in regards to the changes. So a few things as we start to go through them. Um, I have in front of me the town meeting and election manual, mm -hmm. referencing a couple of things tonight. Um, so in regards to the uh, public hearing, so a public hearing preceding a secret ballot vote on an ordinance. Um, so as discussed above, there must be a public hearing a minimum of 10 days prior to the consideration um, of an article by secret ballot. If after the required public hearing, substantial changes are made to a proposed ordinance, a further hearing must be held on the new version of the ordinance. And that's primarily because it's a secret ballot and you can't make right. changes on town floor. So I want you to keep that in mind because uh, <coughs> you have no time left for another public hearing. Absentee ballots have to be available on Saturday. And unless you vote tonight to pull these questions, um, these drafts okay. are going to be on there. Okay. We can make some minor changes, so I was hoping we could just go through them together. Sure. All right. So um, we got the road committee one first. Um, section one formed of seven people. Is the board okay with that? The road commission. Yep. Yeah, that's um, fine. All right. And then, so that one is just changing the word of to with to of. First meeting shall be 30 days after town meeting. That's also just grammatical grammar. You're okay with me making that change? Mm -hmm. Yes. No substantial change. Um, the other one that we've heard from a couple of people is that the uh, the term with the two people that that the board is allowing to um, have the remainder of their term fulfilled. This just isn't clear. So I think it was uh, Mr. Point who clarified how this might be a little clearer by the text. The other three members will be a elected at the annual town meeting after the two members with the unexpired term. So I'm just going to swap those sentences. Are you good with that? Okay. Yep. Yes. Right. 2G is just correcting the spelling of performed. Thank you, Paul. Um, all right. Add 2H. So these are the ones, any addition, you need to think about whether or not this is a substantial change and you think it needs another public hearing. So we, the re note was add 2H, the road committee shall perform duties as requested by town meeting. I mean, how, how is town meeting going to tell the road committee what to do? It has to go through a well, I mean, article, uh, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, the town meeting tells everybody what to do based right. on the articles and right. how it's written. I don't, I don't know. I wasn't at the public hearing. Yeah. I don't know what so it means. So if we, you have a good point. If it should already already be happening through the right. articles. Right. right, right, right. I mean, town meeting. Somebody can't. Somebody can make an amendment at a town meeting on one of the articles, but they can't stand up and add a brand new article and right. give the road committee some sort of instruction so yeah. so if after this first year the town decides they'd like to add a duty it has to happen at annual town meeting anyways right right you so that, can't right and that's how you guys the have duty. the ending so yeah. okay so, yeah. so we're going to know about that way that. ahead of time and that would go yeah. through the process so we don't need that yeah. so we're not adding that no all right section 3a without approval of town meeting uh, the committee has no purchasing authority without approval of the majority of the Board of Selectmen. Adding the words um, without approval of town meeting is fine because I'm guessing this is Mr. Gore. Mm -hmm. He's right. I mean, that's nobody has any purchasing authority without that. I'm guessing right. he's talking about the article being approved that, you, you know, that the money can be appropriated. 
Right. That that's was the reference. So, right. I mean, that's not really a you know a big no, change. It's, just, it's up to you. Yep. You want to add it? Sure. Yeah. Yes. All right. Sections four through six. Uh, add the periods to all the end. That's minor. Seven uh, A. Um, there was concerns about the way the methods of the vacancies were filled. Um, and that there was um, in the past that the whole road committee quit and the board was able to appoint for the full term um, As much as I, I, I agree with the statement being said there I think that is a somewhat of a, a major uh, that's a, cha I think a good right. change I mean that's something that the board could look at for next year currently it says a member of the public shall be appointed by the Board of Selectmen to serve the remainder of the original term um, that, it's your call if you think that's substantial I'd say we look or not. at that one for next year. Hopefully you just don't have that many resignations. Yeah. And as true as that may be, and this way is, tends to be cleaner. It's not. Right. And if it, if, if it does happen and we do have resignations, you know, the way it happened before, we'll just be extremely careful how we fill them. So, you know, for this one year. I think it's pretty rare that that happens. So. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, it's been a while, but yeah. there was a period when they all resigned at once. I right. mean, he's got a, he's got a yeah. point that that right. didn't happen. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll keep that on the radar for next year. And that's all of the changes that I have that were that you brought up. Yep. The road I think that's, that's, in, that's in the road commission. That's in the road commission. So that's the road committee one. Yeah. So I'm just making those couple of changes. Maybe with Mr. Point's blessing, I'll send him a fresh copy. I got two road <laughs> <laughs> All right. Road, road commissioner. Did you send that over? You gave us two road committee ones. I did. Nobody has a road commissioner? Road committee, road there might committee. be something left over from last night. night. Okay. Committee. Over here. Yeah, but both of these you got. Oh, oh, no, you committee. got the same ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, no, I need one too. I wanted this to all be the same, so I made this all three copies of the road committee. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay, Article One, Section Three. It's it's. I just chuckle because this word has been changed. I think five times now. So. An emergency is defined as any incident or occurrence which could immediately endanger life or property, imminently take the word out altogether. I spoke to the attorney. I mean, he's happy with the word he put in there, but doesn't think it makes a difference either way. What adjective you choose to, but that was his choice. Immediately, what was the other word? Imminent. Imminent. Immediately is happening right now. Imminently is an emergency. It, it could, could it could happen. But we have could in front of immediately. Well, and he right. said, I mean, he said yeah. you could take it out to get right. all together, and it could just be which could endanger life or property. Oh. No matter when it endangers it, I mean, immediately, emotions. imminently, tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, you yeah. could take the word out completely. Yeah. Why don't we? But immediately was his. Yeah. Because you want it to be an you know an emergency. Right. All right. You don't want it to be you know something. Yeah. Six months from now. Well, we asked him for his opinion. Yeah, I think we should take immediate out. Yep, just leave the word out. Just leave, leave it at which it which could. could endanger life and or property. Okay. Yep. Yeah, if he said he's okay with it any either way, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Article 2, I uh, no later than. That's just a grammar. Yep. Uh, M. The use of town vehicles or equipment on statutory private roads is prohibited except with the approval of the majority of the selectmen or, uh, or fire chief or officer on duty. I mean, that's, that's, you're just adding someone else that has the authority and probably in those kind of emergencies Emergency. is probably a good idea. Yeah. So we'll add that one. Yep. Yep. Um, M, does that look the last for some town equipment? Okay. Uh, the use of town equipment for private purposes is prohibited. Town-owned equipment shall be used before private equipment. I feel like that needs its own letter because it doesn't seem like it's associated with the um, 
other two sentences before it. So the use of town vehicles or equipment on statutory private roads is prohibited except with the approval of the majority of selectmen or fire chief. The use of town equipment for private purposes is prohibited. And then you want to make, so you're keeping this sentence, the concern from the public hearing wasn't to remove it. Um, I think we'd like to add at the, instead of, I think we'd like to add at the discretionary of the select board, majority of the select board. Yeah, Town-owned equipment shall be used before use of private equ equipment at, at the, the discretion of a major of the majority of select board. Um, I mean, no. you know, we got to remember: are we changing that? I guess I'm just thinking about right, the one changing. before that you guys wouldn't change. Right. Uh, what was the thoughts on the public hearing? What was I said? Mean, <laughs> well, it was they were concerned about the town sander being on a private, the town sander being on a privately owned truck, right? And if there was an accident, and, and didn't and we wasn't the conversation um, that you were going that those sanders really weren't weren't any good, and that you were going to be getting rid of them anyways? Hopefully, I mean that's why discussion. Yeah, it's it's. Um, I've heard both sides. There's some people say they're in great shape and ready to go, and other people say that they're not so much ready to go. So it's. I think I'd just like to have the option to be able to Isn't help someone. Some and the other thing is, I mean, a lot of the trucks coming through today, and I know District 2, the two trucks he bought, one is all it has on it is a sander. The other truck has an all-season body, which has a sander built in. And I think District 1, Dave, you have two trucks that have sanders already in them. So how do you tell someone that has a truck that has the, uh, that's built for that so, oh, here, by the way, slide our sander in it. Right. So I guess I'm just trying to oh. figure out going down the road. I mean, I, I, I just hate to put the, you know, giving the board the option and thinking of how, you know, board members mm -hmm. change here and there. How are we going to, you know, so if he's got one that's already built into his truck and somebody on the other yeah. side doesn't, we're going to insist that he uses, that they use if that? He's, well, they're going to need one if they don't have one. Right. Or they have a slide-in one that, yeah. because the other road commissioners have slide-in ones, correct? He's got one that's built in. Joe's got one that's built in and one that doesn't have a dump body. All it has is a sander on it. So do you tell him to take his sander out off of it and put ours on? I mean, but then, yeah. and then it's his truck. It's, if there's an accident, yeah. Yeah. that's, that's he's, the gray. Not, I know that's the gray that was brought up. It, it, it has happened accident. years ago where um, one of the O'Brien sanders had gotten run into in an accident, and the road commissioner was it was on his truck. His insurance company had to pay it. Hmm. So because um, he was driving. Yes. Right. So as it was been brought up is that well, we've got town property on private vehicles. Right. So it's a very gray area. And then if the sand was ruined, um, ten, twelve thousand dollars replace that sand a brand new day. Yeah. yeah. So let's say MMM say, MMA says, Well, you need to replace that sander. Um, because we our stuff is insured for a, a replacement value cost, I would believe the balloon policy so it's a very gray area so um, it, it probably sounds like i mean if we're not prepared to be in the business of owning equipment say, you know from we the should insurance take it out company all the way now. down yeah. either i mean or leave it in there and maybe that would just give you some momentum not momentum but that would i mean just get rid of the equipment if that's what you know if that's not a business you want to be in and you don't want to force them to use it then the flip, the flip I mean, side of we, that one is if the fire department can't use it for their parking lot or anything no they're not, they're, not, they're not standalone units. Um, they, have to, they have to have hydraulics powering them. Has to have a power unit. Yeah, in, in, the in, theory, in, in history, um, the reason why we ended up with them is, is 50 years ago, the road commissions didn't have money enough to purchase things like that. So if we went back into the archives, we'll see how it was voted on that we'd start buying these sanders, and it's just always followed through um, in good intentions. But in this day and age, with the liability of it, um, you're asking for for a guy to really to stick his neck out and if something were to happen right. um, You know if it's if it's on your own truck and you own it you wreck it right. you fix it You so, put it yeah. over in the corner and we'll get to it when we get a chance right. um, It's catch-22. I, I think we really need to look at legal wise with with your legal team and see um, Why don't you just take it out on changing something? I mean figure out how you're gonna handle it for right the next winter. and if we have a Bought any towns, you know equipment so why down did they the road. Get, why did they stop getting in. used? Well, in this case, Can we? the two road commissioners got done. that had them, them got done. Yeah, yeah most of I our mean, trucks. That's the simplest. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. mean, like when I, I we had the um, 
We had one on District 2. Scott's got one that's, I think, still, yep. Yep. Scott's still got it. Yep. <laughs> um, but I picked, uh, we, we, we purchased these sanders back in, the first one I think was 97, the second one was 98. I picked up the one for District 2 in 98. And the reason why we did that was back in the day, um, we were running the Bryant sanders, and for what the rates were, well, we, we used to get like $30 an hour for our trucks. I mean, it was cheap money. It wasn't affordable for the road commissioners at the time to go out and purchase these sanders for an extra four, I think probably three or four dollars an hour to the truck. So they purchased one for each side of the town. And Do you remember uh, how much they were, roughly? Oh, sheesh. <laughs> we're talking 98. I know. That's <laughs> what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah, I think there was 7000 a piece there. It sounds about I think right. it was 7000 And um, so, but the big thing was it was, you know, one truck was set right up with fenders and all that, this and that. But I used the, this, the town sander on my side of town for, I think, every year I, I did. And the only reason I used it was a simple reason what it wasn't economically smart for me to go out and buy a sander for ten thousand dollars when, when I was only getting five dollars an hour for it. Yeah. So I would throw that in the in the truck. But the problem was was like I iterated last night was if that sander is on my truck and I say I want to go push back my camp roads or something, but it's on that truck mm -hmm. and something happens on it, it, it just it's it's not good. Yeah. So um, but and to make sure that everybody knows, those sanders right now could go in a truck and be used. They yes. are usable. Yes. I put grates on the one I had, and it, it may have to have a couple hoses changed because they always do. Yep. But um, but the other issue you have that I think you're you're forgetting about this, and it was brought up last night, was okay. Um, you have the sanders. Um, you know, I, I did purchase some uh, power brooms for the town of Acton, um, which which saved us a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have this front runner that's supposed to be, you know, our, our next savior for doing our roads. But the problem is with leaving that in that article, what it's going to do, it's going to give, say, a bad board mm -hmm. teeth, okay, and telling them, okay, we have a front runner instead of grading a road like it should be with a grader, okay, then what you're going to be doing is you're going to be dictating to the road commissioner how to do his job because you have a, a piece of crap that, and it was, I never used it once because the tires were all junk, all the hoses, the rams, the tines were all worn out. They're all like this long now. Um, we didn't use it because that was something you maintain with, you don't grade with. Okay. Okay. So by leaving this in here, all this does is give, give an opening for somebody to complain about something. You're, you're just sticking your neck out. At this point in time, by deleting that off that article, okay, it gives the road commissioner his authority to go do his job, not have to worry about whether or not he's doing the right thing and using the right piece of equipment. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. I would say we'd take that line out. So if you take the line out and after the election, you've got a new road commissioner, new selectmen, new, you'll have a new board one way or the other and right. let them decide what they want to do with the equipment. Yeah. 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 Take that line right out then. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, S. 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 Add A to. Okay. So I had a conversation with Burke and Clegg today regarding S, which is the $100,000 $100, article. And I brought you a copy of the statute. He says that we're kind of misinterpreting what it's saying. Okay. So. The statute that's cited here says that any department of the state or its political subdivisions of a county, city, tax, or township may engage in construction of any public work involving professional engineering without procuring the services of a licensed professional engineer as long as the contemplated expenditure for the completed project does not exceed $100,000 and the work both as performed and as completed, does not create an undue risk to the public. He says that they may engage. He thinks that you need to just leave it alone the way it is. It doesn't, I mean, A, he asked me how many how many paving products you, mm -hmm. you've had in the last five years, over $100,000. Um, and B, he says that by, by adding something, you are trumping what the statute says, and he doesn't think that you can do that. Okay. Um, and he thinks, and this is just his opinion, that if it got into 
projects that were three, four, five hundred thousand that possibly an engineer would be a you'd good want, idea. You'd want right. one anyway. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I can't say off the top of my head how many paving projects okay. you have over hundred thousand. Are there many in the last ten years? I don't think there's been been a how couple. Many times probably, do, how many times do you do a paving project over a hundred thousand, roughly? At one failed swoop, one one road. Well, all together. Yeah. See, the problem is if you take say we take the Hopper Road project, which right. was around, I believe, 140000 okay? But that was including the earthwork and the hot top included. Right, and that's the so completed that's project. Why, that's why I said, without adding on there, exempting the hot top out of that, because, you know, like I said last night, uh, um, on average, the shim and overlay a mile of road is $100,000. So if you go and do a mile and a quarter or whatever, or a mile and a half road, and you just go and shim and overlay it, and there isn't even a any excavation going on, it's just a typical shim and overlay, mm -hmm. um, by having it worded like it is, what you're doing is you're setting yourself up so that somebody can look at it and say, well, you shouldn't have done that project. You didn't get an engineer in here. Right. But what, and, and all Brad is saying is that based on the statute, he, they can't add words to it. But it says they may engage in. So it doesn't mean they have to get the engineer. In a, before the 100,000. Right. right. You may not. So if you go over the 100,000, then I mean, what happens? He says it's always been law. It's always been state law. Do you know what I mean? So in the past, if we didn't follow it, we just didn't, we didn't okay. follow what the state law was. But he said they, they could either take it out altogether. Yeah. And, you know, I don't want to say in. in but it's there. I mean, they can't. They can't amend this statute. I mean, that's the way it's worded. Okay. I asked them specifically, and because all that's going to do at the end of the day is create confusion on whether or not you have to have an engineer on a paving project at that point. Oh well, that's why I was and asking. So the entire, most of your entire projects go over a hundred thousand. Oh yeah. Oh, that, most of them. I mean, we had some projects that were you know sixty, seventy thousand, where we were just redoing right. a small section of road. Um, but you know, I guess. The right person could go and look at it and start adding up all the numbers and go, oh, geez, we're over 100,000 now, yeah, you know. Yeah. And I just feel that by having that number like that, that's just going to make <coughs> it very difficult for any road commissioner in town yep. um, to do their do their work because what's going to end up happening, it's, it's just going to, because no town does that. And, I mean, and, some and cities, I'm going to be honest with you, that's do. what he said. That's what he's saying. I mean, he's, you know, he's not encouraging the town not to follow or to follow state law, but he's saying that the, the board doesn't have the authority to trump that because well, that's how it's Unfortunately, the way that the atmosphere in the town of Acton has right. been for the last few years, people nitpick and look for a reason to complain yeah. about something, and we, make, we, we don't want to go there. Yeah. We don't want to be set up for failure. So now if we take that out, we still have to follow state law, though. Oh, if you take it out, the state law is still there. So it's yeah, still, the state law is still there. It's not on the paper in front of them. It doesn't, doesn't, make, any, yeah, it doesn't make any difference. One there's way another one down there that says yeah. the, the road commissioner shall yeah. have all any and all other duties under Maine state yeah. um, revised yeah. statutes. So it would be yeah. covered in that one. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So, I mean, you do what you do. Yeah, just, either, either, yeah. leave it in and know about it or take it out and... Yeah, I, I don't know. I'd say just leave it alone. I believe it. I mean, yeah. it's it's a law. Um. Yeah, I'd say just leave it alone. So, okay. Uh, T can come out. We're not a urban compact municipality. We're not. Okay. Uh, so we meant to take that. that out. So okay. that should come out. That can come out. Um, and then I think that's all the. Yep. That was all the changes. Yep. Yeah, you you caught the ER and RENS on this render. Yeah. Say that again. Oh, in N? Yes. Okay. Yep. Sorry. Did I not list that one? Yep. Okay. So, as I understand it, those are the we've made the minor changes yep. that are not substantial in the sense to need another public yep. hearing. Um, so I'll send it around for final proof. We, um, one will be listed as question one. One will be listed as question two. Where they'll be in the order based on the order that you signed 90 days ago instructing us to have an election. Okay. And we'll start issuing absentee ballots. Okay. <sighs> okay. Paving bid. So... I did reach, uh, so at, how we left it last week is that there was some conversation about uh, possibly reaching out to the um, current road commissioners and reaching out to the potential candidates to kind of um, see which way they thought might be better as far as 
roads or projects. Um, I think the consensus after all of it is just to leave it the way that it was. Um, you know, not knowing who's going to get elected, not knowing what Mother Nature has in store for us, not knowing all of those minor things. They're, they're more, more than anything, they just want to get the bid out there so they can start getting some work done. Um, so Mr. Langley had given me um, a pretty well detailed list of, you know, specifics on um, the handwork and the reclaiming, you know, per square foot. He had some specifics on there. <coughs> um, Mr. Letourneau didn't have a whole lot of time. He didn't, he wasn't able to, to look at it and really agree with all of those. So we, I think we finally are to the conclusion that we just leave it the way it originally was. Um, really the only question that I have for the board is um, the proposed prices must be valid through. So we're in May of 19. Elise mentioned December of 20. Um, there was some talk about ending it in at the end of a fiscal year, but that kind of, you know, you're right in the middle of work in the middle of summer, so having to stop and go out to bid might be a problem. I think that's why we originally did December the year before last. Um, so looking for instruction. Or I think if you put in there to 2000, December of 2020, you're going to get a high bid. You're going to get a very high price because they're going to try to cover themselves for another year. Okay. Um, I can go through 19. I mean, it's just right. by the time we get around to it, we're turning around and we're, you know, we have to do it again. Yeah. I mean, this is, yeah. you know, this, so the price will be good for essentially six months. Right. Right. Dave. Uh, Dave Langley, District 1. Um, made some phone calls today knowing this was going to come up. Um, and some companies are only bidding out for 30 days. Yeah. The cost of hot top right now, liquid asphalt right now is $550 a liquid ton on the stock market. Uh, it comes out every, every Monday morning. Um, right there's a town north of us um, that um, their price came in at $78 a ton. Last year we paid $68.38 a ton. We paid a premium price um, for that. Again, at town meeting, uh, there's been a lot of uh, talk over the paving money that's left in District 2, um, whatever. We, we don't, my, these are my thoughts. Um, you don't know what's going to happen at town meeting. They could pull that money and not say, you know, you, you didn't use this. We're not going to give you any more money. Um, I don't see how we could ask for a price on paving for the next five months when you don't even know what's going to be in your checkbook, you know, after town meeting. Well, it doesn't uh, mean we have to, I mean, yes. we may not be able to use it, but yep. the problem is, I mean, you should be able to see this from just the last few months. I mean, it's taking, you know, three months to get this moved forward. I mean, the, the town didn't want a, a public works director, so it's, you know, me tracking down the guy, you know what I mean? It's yeah. been, we, yeah. you know what I mean? It's oh, been I understand. months trying I'm just to get saying this saying bit out a, there. There's a, there's right. a, there's a, a lot of variables. Over. But under and normal years, it would have been out yeah. for now. And right now, so. these guys, their backs against the wall, and um, they're out weeks and up to a so couple you months go just, paving. So. just through 19, December of 19? Yeah, if he's say. saying that bids yeah. are 30 days, I guess. Well, then they, they won't bid on it. Then, you know what I mean? Some companies are going to bid on it, but we can't, you know, we can't go 30 days. I mean, municipalities, they're used to us going a little longer. I assure you, these companies The thing is, if you ask for that, you're going to end up with a premium price, and we're not going to get the tonnage and the footage we need done with a maintenance budget. That's the other thing. As a business sense, you've got to look how far can we stretch this money out to do it. Or we don't go out to bid, and we just do it by the road. Uh, and and I never. reached out to a gentleman that was here that put that paving program on, Jerry Douglas, mm -hmm. um, and he has nothing to do with these other companies, and that's one thing that his company does. He will come out um, and look at it, measure the roads up, and the more, if we tell them we need, you know, a, a thousand ton of three-quarter inch binder, they're going to give us a better price than saying, well, well, we only need 300 ton. It's all about volume. And everything so that's just food for thought I'd, I'd look at it before probably we, a, I mean a good plan if you if exactly. somebody spends some time in January February March and puts mm -hmm. this together but at this point we're under the gun you know we've got to get something out there right. but you also got a lot of money out there too right. so right. I mean if if um, if if hopefully it all all goes through and the budget numbers come in like we think district 2 is going to be probably around 230 some odd thousand dollars and uh, you know um, there's a lot of money there to be spent and a lot of road to, to be covered too. So, so is uh, it better to go out to bid now and get a price or are we better off if, doing well, when it are we gonna by freeze, the road? You're going to freeze your spending here sometimes too. So, right? When are we going to? Not, ne not necessarily. We're going to get through the paving first. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's up to you guys to decide. So, I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd, it's a lot of thinking to do. So, 
was yeah. we don't short freeze, time. I mean, we don't freeze the, the you wouldn't freeze the, the well, they wouldn't freeze the because because no, they wouldn't freeze, freeze, no, we would right. freeze that part of it anyway. So, so. No. and and not to I mean not to interject, but we either I mean you guys have a policy on these agendas, so right yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, originally we yep. decided that people couldn't come up during not, you know, yep. Yep. but I'm just saying. So right. you asked me to reach out to all of the guys. I did. Yep. Okay. And that was a consensus. So. Okay. And like I said, that's just my thought. It's just a lot of money out there, and we got a lot of a lot of footage to cover. So. Okay. Well, Thank I you. just what you want me to do? just to oh. make a suggestion here at this yep, point quick. in time because you're so far into the season. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, it. I always had Dayton, Fr, yep. Pike. All these guys, they'd come out and they would actually give me the prices for each one of these roads. They will give you a bid for those, and, and if you can give them a time frame, yeah. okay, I think that's they'll lock you in. Because if you just come in with a regular price and say, I, I want, um, you know, normally what they'll do is they'll ask you how much you got to spend. Right. That's usually where your prices start yeah. fluctuating. Okay, if you have a million dollars to spend, your price gets way better mm -hmm. than if you only have $100,000 to spend. Yeah. So fortunately, if, say, District 2 has two, uh, 230, which is being proposed, and uh, I don't know what they have. So say they have over 450000 say almost half a million dollars in paving, mm. um, you know, they should get a pretty good deal, but they will get, they will, if you, they know that you have that kind of money, they will lock you in for a year. They, they have to anyways. Yeah. Okay. So what do you want to do? I don't know. <laughs> I'm looking at you on this one. I like the idea of getting a price per road. That's what I like, you know. Is it too late this year uh, though? We may have an expert coming up. <laughs> How are we doing? And, uh, I do want to hear from you. He, uh, you, I'm a plan operator. Plan operator for Pike. Yep. Um, he makes hot top. So right now, I think uh, Pike's prices are around. I want to say 550, 530, and there's talks of it going to 850 by the end of the year. So I'd say sooner than later, a lot sooner than later. Okay. Get our bids in. Okay. If we can lock in now. Lock in. It might be a better thing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. We'll do that. Let's go to bid. <laughs> yep. Well, well I mean, and, and the I other mean, thing, if the election wasn't pending with the with, with right. one side, and that's my, you know what I mean? Right. The election wasn't pending yeah. with two different road commissioners. If I had somebody that was uncontested on one side, then yeah. I'd be able to say, okay, Johnny wants to do these roads. Right. But right. if the voters elect one of them, right. and one of them has, you know, the voters yeah. are going to elect one of them, and they right. have a different idea on the roads. I mean, yep. who right. am I going to get the road list from on that side? That's not fair. You know what I mean? Right. I think we plan ahead. The road projects yeah. may be a good idea, but no. okay. So time frame. When am I saying that the bids must be good through uh, December of nineteen? Yeah, the end of this year. Got it. Yep. Yep. <coughs> okay. Yep. Thanks, Ian. Appreciate that. Okay, road ordinance. Okay, so first things first, full disclosure, the Smart Shopper ad is incorrect that's in the Smart Shopper today, and it is completely my fault. I sent the wrong date to the Smart Shopper, and they published exactly what I told them to publish. So the public hearing this Thursday is not, it is for the planning board. The road committee, and excuse me, the road ordinance is Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Now, I will tell you that because it is on a warrant and not a secret ballot, we are not legally required to have a public hearing. So it is an informational hearing, so the fact that it was um, advertised incorrectly by myself does not make or break anything because we're not required to have one. It is a public <coughs> informational hearing. The town floor serves as the public hearing because you can make changes to it. It's not recommended that changes be made, but that is the way that it works. Um, and um, for those of you that uh, may want to question it later, I saved you the time by reading, getting the statute for you. So there's no requirement that a public hearing be held in advance of a town meeting when the voting will be on the open floor. This is because an open town meeting has the opportunity to discuss the ordinance. Some statutes require a public hearing on specific types of ordinance regardless of the type, like zoning. Uh, it does say that even where an advanced public hearing is not required, it is often good practice to get public input, and that's why I insisted the board schedule it. <clears throat> However, um, the scheduling date was wrong. So this is what I'm proposing. So we are obviously advertising it online. We're putting it out there. I've got it on the fire department sign. Uh, the board is going to be here on Thursday as well because we have a uh, Warren and Finance meeting at 6. We have a rec meeting at 7.30. So if anybody shows up at 7, 
for the incorrectly advertised meeting on Thursday, you guys will be here to talk to them. Yep. Uh, but the public hearing on this is tomorrow at 7 o'clock. With okay. that said, if you turn to your warrant, the very end, um, you were supposed to take some time last week to look over this. Uh, the only change that um, is in there was from the Class B roads, the piece that was put in about the uh, 20 feet traveled portion. Um, I did tell you that um, one of the attorneys recommended you put the word new under maintenance of roads on number four, or I'm sorry, under procedure for the creation of roads. Um, I will tell you that I spoke to the other attorney and he said absolutely do not add the word new <laughs> and that that should follow all of them. And then the plural word of road commissioner was the other thing that we discussed. Um, you still have plenty of time to have another public hearing published correctly if you so choose. Uh, town meeting is not until the 22nd. So we could have one, you know, 1st of June if you wanted, but I kind of need to know what direction you're heading in with this. We want to wait and see what happens tomorrow night. Let's see how many people will show up Thursday and... Mm. Yeah, we'll see what happens I would tomorrow say. night. Yeah. yeah. So please tell your friends yeah. the smart shopper is incorrect. Jennifer made a mistake. Yep. Tomorrow, 7 o'clock. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the road ordinance? Uh, no. Nope. Okay. Warrant recommendations. Uh, so I'm going to ask that you table this. Um, we haven't even started new business, and we have an executive session tonight. Okay. 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 We'll table that. Try to get through the rest of them next week. I'll try to make the agenda shorter, but okay. you guys have every, something going on every night this week. Yep. That's my confusion. <coughs> okay, you sure drive. Spoke to Mr. Letourneau today, and he indicated to me that um, he did fill in the um, holes on East Shore Drive, and that he also put bump signs on both sides, and uh, he feels like it's in a lot better shape. Okay. Flat ground road. Uh, he said that over the next couple of days, he would be in the process of gathering information from uh, either prior road commissioners or the, um, he talked about, well, I mentioned uh, Mr. Langley as well because he was temporarily on that mm -hmm. side. He wants to meet with the treasurer to see what exactly has been done and what he has left to spend the money on and says that it will be fixed before the end of the fiscal year. Okay. okay. New business, transfer station, May 27. Monday, May 27th is Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. So the transfer station will be closed based on the personnel policy. Yep. Okay. Freedom of information. So I got a freedom of information uh, last week. I did kind of jump the gun and had the employee do all the work and we made all the copies, but uh, your forms have to be acknowledged and signed off. So I'm going to read it and hopefully approve it because all the work was done. Okay. So, freedom of information, specs. We normally don't read these off to the public, do we? You always have. Have we? Okay. I okay. do, though. You don't have to. It's Let's see. It's been requested all invoices and more articles. Yeah. <clears throat> it's on Mindy Spaulding. Anything that was earned? Plus all invoices and warrant articles for District 2, summer road work for 2018. Uh, the one I just mentioned was 17, 18, and 18, 19. Um, let's see. And this was requested by Cindy Hatt. So the, I sent an email to the treasurer um, because she had some questions last week that I, we weren't, I wasn't able to answer on the spot. Um, okay. So I said, hello, Michelle. The board was questioned at the workshop on Tuesday about why the town of Acton would make payments to Mindy Spaulding, if not Ian Spaulding, if, if Ian is the one everyone assumed drove the plow truck. Could you please prepare a response? So Mindy Spaulding is a vendor. She provided us with commercial liability insurance and W-9 and billed us accordingly for the truck and driver. The fact that Ian might have actually drove the truck is not my concern. He would be an employee of Min Mindy Spaulding, much like F.R. Carroll, Pat Stevens, Punsky Scrap Metal, or many other vendors that we hire that have employees doing the work. We pay the vendor. The vendor met the liability in W-9. We are, they are not our employees. Okay. So that was her response. I don't know if you... That sounds... Have any questions or... 
Sounds That's fair to me. Right. Okay. Yep. And I did um, email the individual and told her that everything was ready. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So. Okay. Yep. We have to sign it. Okay. We have to sign off on this, right? Yeah, up at the top there it says. Yep. Be completed by the Board of Selectmen, Selectmen signature. It's all three put our signatures on this. Yeah, the same line. Hmm? Um, my initials. Yep. <laughs> there, so we all can get on there. We actually don't take comments right now. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I realize this. I realize this, but we will. We will have public comment in just when a little bit. When public comment comes up. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't see an issue with that whatsoever because, well, well, we'll get into, okay. Okay. Phone system. So in 2007, 2007, uh, we had a new phone system put in the town hall. Um, it cost the town um, about $3,500. It lasted um, all of these years. Um, we are having some serious phone issues right now. We are down to, I think, three phones upstairs that work. Yep. Uh, the selectman's office doesn't work. The treasurer's doesn't work. The middle office assistant, which is making it very difficult to do business and um, very difficult to have uh, privacy with legal and other calls. So did some research. Um, so Coastal Telephone is who we did the system with back then. So you figure um, we're in, what, 2019, so 12 years, 3,500 by 12. Um, their price is 47.52. I did reach out to um, Atlantic Broadband as well because Shapley just switched over to a new phone system that they have. It's all Internet-based and on the cloud and does all kinds of things. Um, I don't know if just, I mean, I'm just simple. I don't, I'm a little nervous about that. The internet goes out a lot here, and although they have a backup <coughs> plan, for a $1,000 increase after 12 years, um, mm -hmm. I would recommend that we stay with them. It's under the 5000 so you don't have to go out to bid. I did send Michelle an email saying, you know, as you're aware, the phone system is failing. We had it installed in 17. Uh, is there anywhere in the budget the board can consider authorizing a transfer for the new phone system, looking at between 45 and 48? Um, so she replied, yes, there is $5,300 in the workers' comp line in municipal management that will not be spent. So that's in municipal management. It's the same line. So it's approved. So I don't know. We've been having trouble with the system for at well, least I mean, five years. It goes back to Bill Shields and... I mean, well, that might have been Bill. <laughs> no, this. Uh, I mean, the phones. I remember the phones in the selectman's office, for instance. Yeah. Were going out constantly. I mean, we paid thirty-five hundred dollars. We've moved years them around, ago. and yeah, we. Yeah. I mean, we've. I, I mean, yeah. I feel like we've gotten our money's worth. Oh yeah, you've you've moved every phone around in the building until you found one that worked. <laughs> and he's given us free so, service all these yeah. years. Yep. I mean, yeah, well, I he's definitely been good to the town, and for that, I mean, it seems like I'm, a little amount of money for that many years. Yep. Right. But. Um, yep. I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am yep. too. Yep. There's the authorization from Michelle, but you have to make a motion to actually approve the expenditure because she will okay. need it. And it's within the same lines, municipal management, so it is completely legal. Okay. This is what you just read? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you're looking for, are you looking for 47.52 or? 47.52.66. 66. <coughs> 66. Okay. We'll just make it 40. Let's just make it 4,800. Does that sound okay? Yep, up to 4,800. Yeah, up to 4,800. Okay. So this is exactly what you just read about the phone system and whatnot. So, okay. Um, do I hear a motion to approve 4,800 for a new phone system? I'll make a motion to approve up to $4,800 for a new phone system. I'll second that. Move and seconded to approve $4,800 for a new phone system. Any more discussion? Go for a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Thanks. Expense report and freeze. So these are um, updated expense reports that Michelle would like you to go over. Um, okay. See each individual line and where everything's at um, in this conversation and that we've had in the past and don't feel like you have to. <laughs> don't do it unless you're going to stick to it. Because um, your treasurer is... <laughs> 
So we're close to the end of the fiscal year. Right. Um, you know, generally, with the exception of, I know that the, I will tell you that the fire chief was in uh, this week and he did talk a little bit about the um, one of the SCBAs yep. and what his plan was if it's approved at town meeting and how he wants to go about purchasing them so that they'll be the same. We talked about mm -hmm. invoices and how that would have to look because one has to be paid out of the current year, one has to be paid out of the um, future if approved. Um, other than that, I mean, road paving work, I mean, the idea has always been, and, and as selectmen change, this thought changes, is that if you didn't need it all along, you know, we didn't want to see people just go spend $1,000 worth of office supplies just to have right. them. Um, Basically, we do non-essential. We do non-essential, but yep. I mean, last year, we shimmed away from that a bit. <laughs> so something to think about. You don't have to decide tonight. Okay. Maybe once you look at the expense report and see what's left. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of go through each line. It might give you a better idea of what departments may or may not need. Okay. Okay. We will do that. Okay. okay. Ex acceptance of payment policy. All right. So this is just to clear up, um, clear up some concerns that um, treasurer tax collector may be having with some departments so they want to work on some policies that make it a little clearer so all employees and volunteers who handle cash payments for goods, services permitting and donations must apply to the treasurer annually to be bonded by the town's insurance company in efforts to reduce insurance costs all cash payments other than rec concession sales shall be directed to the tax collector's office to make said payment and a receipt will be provided to the customer. Any checks received by the department shall be remitted to the treasurer within five business days of receipt and should be payable to the town of Acton. So Sounds pretty clear. what it does is just forces all ta any cash yep. payments, whether it be copies or permit downstairs or whether it be um, rec registrations that cash that they have to go through the office so that they're receipted and entered right away. Okay. And that just covers everybody. And this came from the treasurer? Or? Correct. Okay, so she's okay with the five business days on the check? Yes, yeah, she wrote it. Okay, <laughs> okay. But that's the only thing I'd question on it? Yeah. Okay, what's your wishes? I'll make a motion to adopt the um, acceptance of payments policy. I'll second that. Move to second it to adopt the acceptance of payments policy. Any further discussion? Call for a vote. All in favor? All opposed? Jim. So I had my assistant uh, work on a spreadsheet for the fitness center um, to try to give you an idea of how we might be able to come up with the appropriations needed to cover the expenses of the gym for the conversations at the Warren Finance. So this spreadsheet is run on the fact that all anybody that's exempt, fire rescue, is going to pay a $10 fee per month. Mm -hmm. Anybody that is a town employee or a committee member who's currently paying $10 would go up to $20. And the year-round residents that are currently paying $20 go up to $40. So everybody essentially, everybody increases. Um, assuming, and this is where the big, the big assuming comes in, assuming that every single person that's currently enrolled in the gym signed up for the same amount of time that they signed up for this year, <laughs> which we have no way in this possible world of knowing, right. we would raise about $6,600 based on those fees, and that would give you enough to cover the costs, which um, continues to come up at Warren Finance. So, um, again, not something you need to decide tonight, but if we're going to increase the fees, it'll, you know, it needs to be before July 1. So it, in my recollection, it was 4600 to run the gym. That's right. what we budget for. Right. So it's, did you say 6600 66 yes. But that, I mean, so that's, it's, it's a, that's it. I mean, that's a good. Um, so there's a buffer in there. Yeah, yeah because, yeah. I mean, there, you know, some of the, I'm looking at some of these some names are, on yeah. here. Some are summer residents. I mean, uh, right. God love them. Some of these people are deceased. I mean, there's, there's just no way of, you know. You're better off to go a little higher oh, yeah. than, than less. But then the other, you know, then the other question is, 
are you going to take the remainder of that money and allow it to go towards gym equipment? Or, you know, what are you going to do I with that money? I think you would based on yeah. it being the okay. members okay. that have... Which would mean you'd it. have to do something with this Which warrant now. Or it's going to roll over at the end of this year. Or we do a trial and basis for one year to see, yeah. you know. And then add it next year. I'd go with the trial. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No more adding. Yeah. Yeah, we're done adding. So you're okay with making the, any of the currently exempt <coughs> 10? Yep. yep. Volunteers, employees are currently 10, right? So they'd be paying 20. And did I? The other one is, I'm sorry, going up 30. So essentially everybody goes okay, up $10, cool. not double. Yeah. So yeah, so it doesn't 10, go to 40, 20, it goes up 30. It goes to 30. Okay. That's better. That makes more sense. Okay. Um, and then what about the key? So I think it's time to, it's probably we time would to have to. Change it. It's time yeah. to change it again. Yep. So yep. they'd be paying those fees plus a $4 key card again. Yep. 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 And how, how many years has that been? Three or four? Three? That the key has been in there? Yeah, a few. It's been quite yeah. a few. I have to check. So... But in the beginning, we did tell people that if they return the key, they got the four dollars back. Mm -hmm. You know, if you stop using the gym and you return, if the key, you can return a key, I mean, in this case, in this maybe case, you can waive it. They'll, but well, in this case, so we're going to return a key in the, to us, right? So we're going to have a double expense and because those the do not duplicate back. keys are expensive, <laughs> right? But they'll get a new key, right? So, so we're going to let them return it. Already, yeah, they've already paid their four dollars, right? So they're just exchanging the key. Can yeah. we do a? Uh, this, code this bad or something we've had we? an alarm over there before i didn't yeah. and it was just it was too much work for the amount you know what i mean because you have to the system will only hold so the the alarm costs to have the system and and upload everybody's code every time it changed okay. somebody forgot their code month, um, all right then it's it was, not yeah. okay yeah because i've already paid for a key mm -hmm. so if they return that key to us you'd give them back the four dollars but i still gotta pay for that uh, the town gonna, still has to pay for a new set of keys but now you're gonna give lock. them a new key they're gonna pay for that one? No. Yeah. So I mean either way you're gonna be out some, but yeah. The four dollar um no, actually it does. I was gonna say the when we look at the revenues for the gym, that four dollar keys may not be in there mm -hmm. oh. because we're not counting that, I think. Right. So I'd have to double check, but All right. again we'll table it. You make a final yeah. decision the next week or so, just kinda of yep. think about yep. what you want to do. Okay. Meeting policy. So for anybody that was in our workshop, our staff meeting, <laughs> we worked on uh, drafting a policy. So this would be a first reading, kind of read through it, and we'll see what it looks like next Go week. Go ahead. <coughs> I'm going to read. If you wish to. All right. Town of Acton, Maine, meeting slash workshop policy. All meetings and or workshops called by any and all town board, committee, or department must abide by the following guidelines. One, chairman, department head confirms space avail availability with the town administrator. Two, the chairman or head notifies the town administrator in writing a minimum of 10 days prior. Three, the town administrator post notices to town website, cable, hallway, a minimum of seven days prior. Four, town administrator notifies APAT director to schedule filming coverage. Five, APAT director assigns meetings, workshops to cable person. Six, APAT director or their designee uploads video to website, YouTube within three business days. And then we have an A under this. In the case of any inappropriate content, camera person will notify APAT director who will notify the town administrator. Only the Board of Selectmen have the authority to instruct edits. Um, in parentheses, this policy does not apply to the weekly staff meetings held between the Board of Selectmen and the Town Administrator. Okay, that's the first reading of that. Thank you. I'll give that back to Jen. <coughs> okay, calcium fluoride. I think we all saw the same email from... Um, uh, Leslie Berlin saying that 7th Street had reached out to her, uh, not 7th Street, Tattle Street, Tattle Street, had reached out to her in regards to um, calcium chloride being something that could be reimbursed through Article 43. Uh, so I told her I would put it on the agenda. Just kind of get your thoughts. I'm guessing you might have to do some background on it. In, in um, um, oh, no, no. Not, not till not till public comment. Excuse me? Not till public comment, please. Oh. <laughs> We're almost there. In my in my opinion, it it the um, when I reread the the statute, it didn't seem to cover treatments of roads, but more repair to prevent runoff. And I don't feel that calcium chloride 
is a repair that prevents runoff. Um, that's my opinion. I, we can look a little bit more into it, but I thought we, are they looking, I guess my next question would be, are they looking to, to be reimbursed in the future or? I would imagine it's the future. I have to look at the. we just passed one for them. Right, so they okay. just, um, they got, just got reimbursed. They had to submit the receipts and the for invoices really to right. approve the 3,000, right? Yeah. Yep. So I would imagine it's the future, but um, I have to find the email. I didn't, I don't think it's specified. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll start with that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, executive session? Yeah, do you want to mm -hmm. uh, go into public? Yeah, we need one. Okay. Yep. And it has been posted out front for seven days. Okay, okay. sure. Do you want to do public comment first so they don't have to wait? Yes, why don't we do that? Because, yeah, because, yeah, cause, yeah. <laughs> why don't we do that? Okay, I'll open it up to public comment right now. And then go to <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what we were wondering is, we understood that calcium chloride was something to be reimbursed. What we were trying to find out is like, for, we, for next year, which I know the budget is from July 1st to June, to June we were just wondering if it's possible, if we're going to apply for it, but can we just put it down in June this year a little bit earlier, keep the dust down, we'd still apply for it next year. We're not looking for any more money. It's just the next year's we do the reimbursement on the maintenance. Can we just put it down a, a month early? Fiscal year. The, the work is on a fiscal year as well? I believe so. It has to be within the fiscal year. Yeah. It has to be done. Well, that's what I was, my question was. And okay. if it was permissible to you know, just put it down early and still budget it, we just didn't know. Right. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not seeing that it would get... First glance, I'm not seeing that it would be covered under the for Article 43. Okay, well, we understood it was, so that's why we're asking the question. Okay. So, um, that was my first glance at, at Yeah, I, haven't I mean, I read it. it as repairs to prevent st stormwater runoff into the lakes. Well, that's, where that's what calcium clay holds it together, so the, the dust doesn't go all into the lake. Keeps so the dust down. I feel like we should look into it yeah, before we have I say yes. Yeah, we look into it. Yeah. How expensive is is it to treat the road? Uh, I think we're around 1500 okay. a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll look into it and see if it, see how it fits. Okay. See. All right. So, yeah. so should oh, I yeah. check back <coughs> at some point in yeah. time? Give us a few weeks. Well, it'll yeah. stay on the we'll, agenda. It'll stay yeah. on the Make agenda. It'll here. come back up next week. So. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Any other public comments? I just wanted to thank the board and David Langley for all of his work that he's done up at the rec field for us. Um, it's been a very trying time for the rec with the baseball season, with the condition of our field and parking lot. Um, the school has been wonderful letting us use their fields. Um, but David has gone above and beyond going up there and checking on that and working on it and raking it. And um, he filled in the trench for us for the electric, which was really um, kind of him. And um, I just really appreciate it a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Any other public comments? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Paul. Uh, Paul Poyant, um, is on the um, road commissioner ordinance, is it item, the $100,000 thing, is that uh, item S? Because I don't have it in front of me right now. Yes. Um, the only comment I wanted to make about that, whether, you, you know, it's up to you guys whether you want to leave it in or take it out. But if you leave it in, I would say it's important that, again, in the interest of avoiding confusion, um, that the summary that's in the town's portion of that item accurately reflect what the state is trying to say in, in that referenced document of the state. Because I, I got the impression tonight that part of the problem is a quote unquote misunderstanding of what the state law says. So that's that raises the question of whether we're summarizing it accurately. So if, if we're you know, we don't want to trump state law. Right. So, but it, so if our summary is different in intent from what what the state law says, then we're by having that item there and we're inconsistent in those two things. It's going to cause problems. Yeah, and I think that was what what he told me. The explanation was the first few words that said to the extent required by 32 RSMA 151254. So he's saying that it's only the piece required to that statute. To the extent required by that statute. Well, bottom line is, 
we shouldn't be we shouldn't be looking at the state i mean sweet at the town portion in that little item right and coming to a different <laughs> conclusion about what's required or not required than the state law says right, because exactly we would in effect saying. be trumping state law and causing and that's why he much told us confusion. not to adjust it because we couldn't trump state law right. so right. you know maybe the best idea is to pull that for now until we're sure that it will do something very definitive and non-confusing for whatever good that provides us thank you thank you thanks we leave it am i leaving it um, we'll leave it you want to pull it i want to leave it Give us a half a second. <laughs> uh, do we have to decide right now? <laughs> no, I guess we got to know right quick. Well, you can't. We yeah, I mean, it's got to be tonight. Yeah, we got to know tonight. I mean, you. I mean, you can always, you know, come out after the executive you session. Say, you're we'll still a new business. Yeah. 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 We'll discuss yeah. it just a hand more. And yeah, I can see what he's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Ian Spalding. Um, I just wanted a little um, clarifying about. Um, the, the Freedom Act there that was brought up about mm -hmm. my wife, Mindy Winchell Spaulding, and, and I with snow plowing and stuff like that for the town. Um, now, when you guys signed off, are we free and clear where this isn't going to be brought up again? Or, I mean, we did everything by the books and. Yep, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you did it by the book. It just. So, I mean, free, freedom of information is a law that allows anybody to request any documents, you know, in, in municipalities. Right. right. So, I mean, the board can't say that, you know, that somebody won't bring up another freedom of information. We have only seven days to comply with them by law. So the board can't say that. I mean, the board, all the board can tell you is that they have reviewed with their treasurer, who is the HR, and who has returned, you know, has, who has reviewed with legal when this first came up, whenever you guys started plowing and this, this originally came up, and that they don't have any concerns with it. Um, you know, and everything here that is nothing that anybody else, you know. Okay. So it's, it's all, they're all public documents. They're all of the invoices okay. that, that might have been requested. I mean, be, be no different from any other department. But, I mean, the board can't tell you that it won't come up again because they don't know what anybody right. will request. But, but as far as they're concerned, as I understood it, they don't have any concerns. No. All right. no. Like I, I said, concerns the treasurer looked into it with legal, and it, yeah. as an independent right. contractor, it's not us to track who's driving for that company. Right. I don't, I don't right. like, you know, yeah. having somebody assume, you know, if I'm driving or... It, that's why we did it as a subcontractor. And you don't have, oh, the town explanation. You're not the only company that's done that. Yep, there's, yep. Yeah, there's other, other companies that have, yeah. Do the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I was, uh, I got aware of this today that an ex-subcontractor of mine, um, somebody has concerns and um, that this person must be doing something illegal because my sister happened to be the one because we've got to understand here, this is my sister that the issue mm -hmm. is with, okay? And the timing is just great, okay? Oh, yeah. So, besides the point, um, so what, I, what I'm worried about here, okay, because I'm not worried about anything that happened there. Everything they did was legit. They had their insurance in. They got their workman's comp waiver. Everything was there. They gave a bill like any other subcontractor would do, any... At any point, you guys okayed them. It went through, just like any anybody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. um, this is, I believe, a ploy to just get what I I think there's a saying, a turd stern. Okay, because that's that's what this is right now. We, and I, are we going to get to the point where are we going to start at are we going to start chasing down every subcontractor and see what's going on? It's kind of a coincidence. It was anybody else's. Any other subcontractor, was any of that information pulled? No. No. Okay, this is just really, really good timing, okay? And we've and already decided the big, that, that, that I know, there's nothing I know. to worry about, so right. I don't think I know that, and I, and I do thank you for that because, I mean, I just wanted to make this aware that when it says Mindy Spaulding, that's Mindy Winchell Spaulding. There's a reason why this is happening, oh, yeah. okay? And the biggest problem I've got with this situation this is a road committee member that's doing this. She did it as a person. And, I know as that. An individual. Okay. That's right. so and that's the problem when you've got a committee member that all of a sudden take, takes the life. tape off and yeah. puts the suit that's back on. Okay. And, and remember, David, too, there, it also says plus all invoices and warrants for yep. summer and for summer road work. So there yeah, were two pieces I, I know, to it. I know yeah. that. Okay. But, I mean. 
If you every year got we have to these worry issues, about, you've got nothing to worry. Oh no, no, about, I, right? we don't have nothing to worry about. Yeah, I'm just so. I'm addressing the issue of why this has become an issue. Yeah. Okay, and another issue that I have is this: this oh, keeps getting thrown out there that District Two left all this money, okay, in his budget. I was four four months into my term, yep. Yep. and I had a road scheduled to be paved. Right. Okay, that's why there's $132,000 in that account. Just so those who are out there doing whatever they do and saying Dave Winchell didn't spend his money, I spent yep. my money. Yep. Okay, I just didn't, I had, I believe I had eight more months of my term to spend that money. Yep. You okay. didn't finish your term, that's um, why you didn't So I just want to, I just want to, I don't, <coughs> we don't need to go down this road. Okay, this is a road that, right. you know, if you want to start picking on people, the problem you're going to have is you start picking up on, picking on all these subcontractors, you're okay, that are working for the town of Acton, you're going to find an awful hard time to get contractors here when you have people coming up here and nitpicking subcontractors. He gave us a very good duty. We didn't pay workman's comp on him. We didn't pay taxes on him. He was getting paid less, theoretically, than the people who were working for the town of Acton. Yep. Okay. And you want to go chasing down someone who gave you it, and, and he did a damn good job. And he was there when he needed it. He took time off from work to do his job because he had lots of time off. So he would take time off to go plowing. I don't know where this, this little witch hunt is going, but we're going down a real bad path here, and I know why we're going there. Thank you. Any other public comment? Dennis Long. Um, I would ask the Board of Slotman to first um, make the rules consistent. Mm -hmm. uh, when you have people that's only allowed to speak at public forum, uh, which me and many others have respected that, mm -hmm. and um, I don't think it should be allowed uh, in any other forum. You had Ken up here tonight, uh, which was representing Tattle Street, which you guys were talking about, and you didn't allow him to speak. Um, if you have something for a road commissioner, I appreciate that, or, or some other employee of the town, but just the average citizen getting out and just talking when they feel like, I don't think is fair to the rest of the audience. Okay. Um, this request for information I don't know what the implication is uh, anybody that works for a public entity uh, has the right to know uh, where the money's going uh, exactly. who's getting it and, and things like that I mean it's in the town report uh, so it isn't like a private entity where you don't have the right to know that I mean if if I wanted to know um, how much Jen spent at a, 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 a night to count in the ballots, uh, all I'd have to do is fill out a piece of paper and ask. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I don't think there's any negativity here uh, headed anywhere. I don't, there's nobody's asking this stuff. I know myself personally, the only one I've heard say that uh, District True road commissioner that you guys appointed uh he has said several times uh that he was left a heck of a mess on these roads uh it isn't been hasn't been joe public that's made that statement uh it's been the road commissioner so thank you thank you any other public comment no nope. uh. <coughs> Now we're going to say I'm not going to get in any arguments with them. <coughs> sit here and have a confrontational argument with somebody who just spoke, but I, I understand what's going on here. But I want to want to address the selectmen and let them know that when you start talking about the way I took care of my roads and the reason why my roads were like they were, like they are, they were in bad shape when I got them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I want everybody to be very clear. The first year I was road commissioner, I had no paving money. This okay? is true thanks to the person that was just speaking, okay? The second year I was road commissioner, I had to come in with a special project, thanks to the person who just spoke, because they were limiting me, okay? No, I'm not, it, it, I'm it, gonna. It, it, no. it already did. Well. And 
I, I just like both, you, like both, you said, both you sides have issues, here. so let's just cut it right now. Yeah. Um, if you would, I, please. I, I do understand where this is going. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I was concerned about that, I am not concerned anything legally. Nothing legally went wrong. Right. Okay. okay. Um, it was just the way it's been. It's put out there, going after a single individual. That's all I'm talking about. And certain people are going to get up there and say, oh, there's nothing nefarious going on here. We're not blind. We're not stupid. Okay. That's all I was coming okay. up here saying. And we don't have to get into how I didn't take care of my roads for the last Let's night. Let's not go there. Okay. Um, okay. Now we're, we're going to have a motion to go into executive session. I'll make a motion to go into executive session. No, I'll second that. Okay. You have favor? to say pursuant to. Pursuant, pursuant to. to is it on here? MRSA 405-6A. Okay. All All right. Right. I'll second that. Mm -hmm. Opposed? Okay. We will come back out of the session and make any decisions that we need to make and then end the, end the session tonight. So. so So. we'll need a motion to come, come out. So what do we make a motion to come out of executive okay. session? I'll make a motion to come out of executive uh, session. I'll second that. Moved and seconded to come out of the executive session. 647. Uh, 647, okay. All in favor? All opposed? Okay, we're out of executive session. So before we went in, um, somebody under public comment, I know that I could see the wheels turning with Ms. Miller a little bit. Um, Paul made some good points about uh, that piece on the road commissioner. Um, was it S? 100,000. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and where the, it's just unclear. I mean, we've mm -hmm. got a couple of other items that you're – tabling until next year kind of play with the ordinance for a year and see how that works do you want to take it out or do you want to leave it in or what are your thoughts <coughs> i wouldn't have a problem taking it out i wouldn't either it's I mean, a, it's no, a it's law already it's a there law. State so law i don't want to confuse there, so. anybody if we yeah. try to reword it yeah all right so that's going to be s so s comes out, comes out. Yeah. okay and then the other thing that i forgot to mention under new business i tried to put any concerns that we have under public business or under public comment that pertain to the board on as old business so that we can kind of follow up for the viewers at home. Uh, so last week, uh, Mrs. Hart mentioned um, some concerns to the annual report, I believe from the 1617 book. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to get the information um, that was passed along to us. And as we believe, on page 31 of the annual town report from 16 and 17, under the municipal accounts pay payable, uh, it looks like an employee inadvertently copy and pasted three names under M three times. So it reads mainly media, Robert Mann, Mark's Printing, Mass Group, and then it repeats mainly media, Robert Mann, Mark's Printing, Mass Group, and it does that three times. Um, so it is a typographical error on um, town employees' parts. It does not mean that those three vendors were paid three times. It just means that when we copy and paste all these lovely reports, um, we didn't remove it. So that's that. And I wanted to also point out that the auditor's report is completely separate from the town departments, and he doesn't prove any of these. So the fact that somebody accidentally typed something in twice, the auditor would have never caught because they're not in the books. He's the, looking at the books. The error was not on the auditor's report. The error was not. This is the one that, that was pointed out that we believe what she was referring to. Yes. Right. Yeah, no, this was in a town department submitted to us. Nothing to do with the auditor's that report. That an employee accidentally copied and pasted three Copy times. and paste is your friend until you don't yep. catch it. Yeah. So. Yep. Okay. Waldo has been found. Okay. I believe. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Okay. And that takes care of the last agenda item that we had. Um, was there something else? Seems to me there was, but I don't know what it was. No, nope, we've got a busy next couple of days. Public hearing tomorrow at 7. Yep. Rec on Thursday at uh, Warren Finance on Thursday at 6. Yep. Public hearing at 7 downstairs for timber harvesting. Yep. Okay. 7.30 rec meeting upstairs. Took care of that. We talked about that. We're not, but there's no follow up from the executive session we had. Nope. Nope. And the one for tomorrow night is on the road ordinance. ordinance. Yes. And that's primarily which section? That was. That is the just the one line that's going into, that's in your warrants. Yep. Okay. Just the one line. Um, you still got to kind of review if you want to put that new word in there. And then the S on the road commissioners that we right. talked about, but definitely okay. take the S off. Definitely take, yeah. It seems my like, opinion. Yeah, yeah, the S is yeah. right. Yep. The other one probably should just sit tight for. Yep. 
because I think that if you want to, there's, there's a lot of people that may seem to have some concerns with that, but we're going to look at it as a whole a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Um, we got public. Oh. We did. We did. We did the announcement somewhat. Public hearing tomorrow night. Mm -hmm. um, EMA director posting. It's all going on until the twentieth. There's a closing date on that. So that's all we had for announcements. Yep. Transportation was closed. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Tomorrow we're having um, for this story and activity hour <laughs> very exciting to me too yeah it is i look forward to it ryan peters of spos is coming to read his book called um pine cone pete is not impressed say that again pine cone pete is not impressed it's a children's book nice. that he wrote um but he's what a rapper of 10 to 11 oh. yep and that's our last story hour until september um, I did read, too, that the um, Odyssey of the Mind girls made their goal. Okay. Um, thanks yes. to a lot of a lot of different people and a lot of efforts, they made their goal, so they've got enough money to go to their world competition. So I wish them luck and well. Yep. How was the comedy show? Did anybody go? I didn't. I didn't. No? No. So, okay. I heard that it was one well. I know. I did talk to the Botels. They set up uh, babysitting here, mm -hmm. so, and I saw them the next day as they prepared for the <laughs> breakfast. I said, "How oh, it was a big babysitting event." They didn't have anybody show up, so it went well. Oh, good. <laughs> good. So okay. that's good. Okay. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Good night, all.